Welcome to Black Onyx Alternative Investments, where we bring you face-to-face -face with South Africa's most talented boutique asset managers and industry stakeholders. Why do we do this? Because we believe that you, the investor, deserve to be better informed so as to achieve the best risk-adjusted returns. Today I'm introducing you to Eric Null from Terebinth Capital. He runs the Terebinth Fixed Income Macro Hedge Fund, established in 2013. Eric, thank you for joining us today. We look forward to learning more about you and the firm. Start us off, tell us a bit about yourself and how you got into alternative investments. So the bit about myself is um, I'm a country boy. I uh, grew up in the Klankaroo, Oatsorn to be specific, and uh, had no exposure to the markets growing up. Um, moved to Cape Town directly after school, had to find a way to make a living. And in my first three years in Cape Town, I worked at an import and export company where the person that I worked for came from a pretty privileged Afrikaans background. And part of his day-to-day uh, -day living involved trading equities for himself. So that was my first exposure to the market. It was um, an intriguing way to make money. So I tried to learn a bit, a bit more about it. And these were the, the cowboy days when I think you had five or seven days to, to settle trades and you could actually trade more than you had cash in your account. So it was really my, my first introduction to, to leverage also. Um, um, I then moved to London for four years where I worked at an oil company and after doing some accounting work in the firm, um, I had the opportunity to move onto the oil desk or the, the, the trading floor really there. It's an upstream oil company. I came back to South Africa actively looking for a, a position in the financial markets and specifically if I could in the fund management industry. I put my CV out and was uh, very fortunate to get a position at Coronation Capital, which started off as a, a very, very junior position. I was prepared to do anything um, and eventually sent me to Dublin for a few months where um, I was very, very lucky to spend some time with David Barnes, one of the um, owners of, of Coronation Capital and highly, highly inspirational person. I came back to, to South Africa, worked in the bond desk at Coronation Capital for, for a few years and I was approached by NetBank and subsequently RMB to head up their fixed income sale operations and, and I think critically uh, part of that was then writing the South African fixed income daily which probably I became known for in the end and that led to me moving to the buy side. And I had the opportunity then, or was approached by Atlantic Asset Management to, to join them in 2009, specifically to launch an absolute return set of products, which included a hedge fund and a bespoke off-market total return fund, and also to be uh, in charge of, of strategy um, or head of strategy and research. And they carried on with writing weekly commentary, which is something that we still carry on with today. Eric, please tell us about the genesis of Terebinth Capital and the strategies that you represent. Okay, so Terebinth was launched in 2013 uh, on the back of my view that a sustainable way of, of being a smaller manager in, uh, in a world where it's very much um, operated by, by the largest fund managers is that um, and we've learned subsequently that, that a few allocators are, are also starting to, to move into, into this concept, is that uh, small managers should be looked at as, a, you know, as, a, as an alternative to or latch on a satellite portfolio to a core portfolio. And I was, I was quite passionate about, about that idea, um, rather than be a small manager that tries to become a larger manager and, and go back into corporate. The, the, the easiest move for me was really from the sell side to the buy, buy side and not being part of a corporate en environment anymore. So um, also I think that uh, what made it easy to launch Terebinth was uh, I am very passionate about the asset laws and about the markets um, and I could really you know, implement my views directly um, and build the business to, to my own liking and, and, and ply people in that direction if I, if I, if I can say that. Um, so we started in 2013. I started it um, inside um, a family office um, that was originally um, the, the, the controlling uh, owner of that business. Um, so we were really a single manager inside a family office and subsequently we've had a management buyout. Um, so I'm part owner together with an equity partner that's now diluting to staff. 
it is our view that boutique managers should be uh, manager owned. Um, I think that's what differentiates these type of businesses from, from your larger asset management groups. And uh, also the concept around eating what you kill, I think is something that we feel very passionate about. So starting Terabinth, the whole idea was to start a lean and mean business with the first phase really I would almost say replicating what we did before. So we didn't really want to skip a beat between the previous hedge fund and the previous start return fund to the new business. Um, we had no guarantees that people would follow us. So we could just, you know, stick to our graft, um, not be guilty of style drift um, and do things in a scalable um, a manner and, uh, and, and, and work on our reputation. Um, we're happy to say that, that that phase one really worked, it, uh, it worked well, and it allows opportunity to then bring a alternative to my skill set, which was a macro, very much macro top down uh, skill set to bring an alternative or the opposite of that uh, into the business. So Andreas Tindland um, joined us from the Norwegian Sovereign Wealth Fund uh, a few years ago. Uh, he's got a very, very strong quantitative background. He was a uh, joint manager of the emerging market portfolio, uh, fixed income portfolio for the Sovereign Wealth Fund for 10 years in New York, came to settle in Cape Town. His um, trading colleagues in Norway knew me from before, uh, suggested that he speaks to me. Uh, I've got a very similar background to or similar style to his, um, his previous partner in the business also. Um, and um, being so strong on the quantitative side, um, I think uh, the combination of the, of the skill set really worked well to assist us also to, to grow the business um, much quicker during that second phase than we thought it would take. Um, so inside the first three years, then we really managed to, to double the product set from two to four, um, where we are now very comfortable in saying that we are a long only business with the hedge fund. The long only part of our business probably makes up um, almost 70% of our business, um, but we still have the, the absolute return hedge fund mindset where the other products benefit greatly from, from the hedge fund skill set. Um, and we can elaborate on that a bit more maybe if you like. Um, I think also importantly now in the third phase um, of the business development is bringing in further skills, also specifically bottom up skills. Uh, where you've got analytical ability, uh, Namati Bana Matshoba joining us from Coronation and Catalyst previously. She's got vast uh, credit um, uh, and cash management experience, but also listed property more recently. Uh, that's a very natural fit for our business. And then with the introduction of uh, Nicole Larish also, who's an industry veteran on the operational side of businesses, you know, having launched the fixed income business at Maitland, um, also being uh, instrumental in the transitioning of funds into the into the uh, um, regulated space in the hedge fund industry, uh, more uh, you know, more recently at Blue Inc. Um, I think we've got a very strong nucleus now to allow us to maybe move to the next phase of our business, which would be to bring in junior talent um, and also through that um, and um, in partnership with, with our equity partner, um, assist in transforming the industry. Please give me your definition of a hedge fund, an explanation on short selling, and how the tools of modern finance manage risk and actively seek alpha. So those are quite a few questions. So I think a hedge fund by definition is a fund that can gear or lever um, and sell short something that it doesn't hold, own. Um, and, and predominantly what these type of funds do um, to the layman really, to explain it to the layman is depending on how the mandate allows, um, no two mandates read exactly the same. And I think this is um, for obvious reasons, allocators have you know, different categories in which they prefer managers to operate in, um, you know, risk buckets also probably. And um, I think depending on the mandate, um, it really allows the manager to then take a certain amount of money and um, go to the prime broker, uh, borrow script, uh, do repurchase agreements, um, and through that system leverage uh, their portfolios. Um, and I think critically also, what probably differentiates its funds from the long only funds more specifically is, a, especially in the fixed income space, they make use of derivatives much more actively 
than in the long only space. And again, uh, with prime broker agreements, this is a much easier thing to do, even in the regulated space. As a long only manager, uh, especially as a smaller manager, um, I can, uh, I can um, uh, tell you that it's very, very hard to get trading lines um, to sign ISDAs and ISMAs and all these things to trade, to trade derivatives with, with uh, local or foreign operations. So those would be, I think, the core uh, differences or the, you know, the, you know, the core differences between a, between a hedge fund and a, and a long only fund, but also in terms of the tools um, and the skill set. And I think, you know, I'm not the, the technical person of the business. Um, what I, I would, I like to flip the, the question slightly in a different direction. Um, and assist allocators and investors to understand the product slightly differently also while still trying to answer the question is to understand what a hedge fund does um, and what differentiates it. Um, so it's not just that it can lever and short sell and uh, you know there's potential infinite losses uh, if it short sells for instance. Um, so in the regulator space this is something that uh, will be that is addressed. Some mandates have hard stop losses, which you know we can get to also speaking to our philosophy and what differentiates us. But I think critically important for investors to understand is that um, the key difference between a hedge fund and a long only fund is that it allows the manager opportunities and a tool set very differently from the long only tool set and the long only skill set. To, to operate throughout market conditions and throughout liquidity conditions very differently from a, what a long only fund can do over time. Um, and once the industry starts appreciating that more, I think we'll get to a stage where hedge funds will become a more popular tool set in the overall tool set. How is your fund different from other traditional and alternative investments? In fixed income, it is hard to differentiate yourself from other managers. Uh, in equities, you can call yourself a growth manager or a value manager. I think for certain value managers over the last few years, the category started getting a subcategory called deep value. Um, in fixed income, really, the opportunities in, in especially the hedge space, um, math while mathematically extremely wide, um, is pretty much focused at the end to arbitrage um, or you know what you know the long short really uh, if you if you want um, so what differentiates a, a fixed income hedge fund from another fixed income hedge fund i think over time is the appreciation of risk management uh, fixed income is really a risk tool rather than a return tool um, i think we've seen enough theory over, over the last century that equities is an infinitely better asset class than fixed income when it comes to returns. Um, it is what fixed income does when equities don't do well uh, where you really start differentiating yourself from the pack. So for us, uh, two things. It's looking at managing downside um, and create uh, incremental alpha over time with um, good liquidity and lower volatility than the pack. And I think um, in more technical terms then what that would imply is that a good hedge fund manager over the long term uh, is the one who uses the lowest amount or a low amount of units of risk to generate a unit of return. Um, and I think when we look at surveys, um, this, um, the, the knowledge of that or the skill set of that is probably missed by not showing Sotino, Raigo, uh, Sotino and Omega uh, ratios for, for, for the different managers. But maybe there's an, there's an extra level to that question also in terms of differentiation. I think we should also differentiate between hedge funds and long only funds. So while we are a long only business with a hedge fund, I think it's still a, a mindset uh, issue. So I think that as a hedge fund manager, it is probably easier with that skill set developed over time, um, someone that spent a lot of hours managing hedge funds. Um, it is a much more 24-7 kind of line of business than traditional long only. Um, uh, the skill set is a natural fit to manage long only money then rather than the other way ar around. I think it's much harder for someone that cut their teeth in, in long only to, to move across to, to hedge. Um, it is a much more volatile environment. 
Um, selling something short does not come natural to uh, traditional long only people. Um, and also the broader tool set um, is also slightly unfamiliar often to your more traditional long only people. Um, and that then leads me to the third part of the, uh, of the argument and that is that there's still um, an obsession in the industry, um, in the broader savings industry really, um, to, to see hedge funds as um, a competition almost to, to long only um, uh, funds or, or managers versus one another. And I think this is disingenuous in the extreme. Um, two years ago at the, at the Hedge News Africa conference, um, we had a panel session which um, uh, was, uh, was chaired by Carmen Nell, um, Lawrence Pretorius, Mark LaRue, myself, was on this panel. And the message that we tried to, to drive home was really that um, hedge funds should be seen as a satellite um, investment um, to a core portfolio. Um, we've also seen that concept now starting to get hold in the long only space where you've got a, um, you know, a, a pool of assets um, that is used in a traditional long only, traditional long only manager space and alternative managers now becoming the satellite portfolios to those core portfolios. And to me, this is where the industry should start looking towards to. If you consider that the fixed income hedge fund industry is but a fraction of the largest fixed income, strat income fund in South Africa, then people should realize really that you know, these should not be seen as competing asset classes or managers, but really as complementary. Thank you very much for joining us, Eric, and giving us more detail on yourself and the firm. And thank you for tuning into Black Onyx. For more details on the alternatives, you can visit our website.